Hey guys, this is Eckhart's Letter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars video. Today we'll be talking about one of the most famous named capital ships in all of Star Wars, Home One, flagship of Admiral Akbar, arguably the most powerful ship in the entire rebellion and in the early years of the New Republic, and a constant presence at the galaxy's major battles, including the Battle of Endor, the Battle of Belbringi, and countless, countless others. Home One truly is more than just a ship. It's a symbol for the Alliance, for hope, and later for the New Republic. So with a ship of Home One's pedigree and power, many people are surprised to learn that the vessel actually has a listed canonical length of only 1300 meters, 1.3 kilometers, and that's in both Star Wars Legends and Canon. Notably, that's smaller than a Star Destroyer even. It's actually about 20% shorter, so pretty significant. So we'll talk about why this is the given length and then we'll talk about arguments for it being longer, but just personally, 1300 meters for Home 1 never quite sat right with me. The problem is, in Return of the Jedi, when you watch the movie, you don't actually get a good scale of Home 1 compared to something like a Star Destroyer. We don't even really get that many shots of it next to Mon Calamari cruisers where we can compare the length. For me, I guess the ship always just seemed more powerful, and that might be because I'm sort of presupposing that it would have to be, given that it's the flagship for Admiral Akbar. But I mean, it's also the center of the fleet, literally, and there's that incredible shot before the battle where all the starfighters are flying by, and it really does seem like a pretty large vessel. The lore sort of backs this up as well, even the Return of the Jedi novelization says this. They were led by the largest of the rebel star cruisers, the Headquarters Frigate, which is actually what Home One used to be called. Interestingly, that line actually comes directly from the script, which also says that the Headquarters Frigate was the largest ship in the rebel fleet. So in my mind, that's a very clear distinction between Home One and the other Mon Calamari cruisers, one that I think is brought out on screen. Later sources, like the Saga edition for the Starships of the Galaxy Guide, specifically say that the Home One was basically a completely different subclass of MC-80s, and that there were other ships in that class, like the Independence, and that they were generally tougher and more powerful than other MC-80s. And that is notwithstanding the fact that each Mon Calamari cruiser is different. The MC-80 is just so different from the standard type that it gets its own subclassification. However, despite that, as I mentioned earlier, both the Legends and Canon have put the Home One specifically at 1300 meters, and given the Home One type, a range of 1200 to 1400 meters, so even at its largest, a Home One type ship would be at the very least 10% smaller than an Imperial class Star Destroyer. These numbers have been confirmed multiple times in modern sources. We have, for example, the Essential Guide to Warfare, a Star Wars fact file, and even a response by the Star Wars story group saying that these numbers are not likely to change. But what about on the other side? Is there anything to counter the 1.3 kilometer long length for the Home One, or the 1.2 to 1.4 kilometer long length for the class as a whole? Well, sort of. The lore, however, has been very consistent about Home One's length, especially recently, even if I personally don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. But there are cases where the ship is clearly portrayed as being longer than 1300 meters. The best example of this would be Star Wars Empire at War, where Home One is scaled to be about three kilometers long, and the game is generally pretty good at scaling ships. Just generally as well, I think a lot of the official art which has the Home One also gives the ship somewhat of an upsize, and an example of this I'll present is of the Battle of Turkana, which was first portrayed in the opening for Star Wars X-Wing. Other than that, the main source of argument against the length is actually from Return of the Jedi itself, and specifically how Home One looks. Now, this gets really nitty gritty in certain places, so instead of going over all the details at times, I'm going to link you guys to people who have actually done the hard math on this. Specifically, we have, for example, the Force.net, which really chronicles every sighting of the Home One and breaks it down really explicitly. Before we look at that, though, there are a few scenes that I notice where the Home One looks larger. One would be the very first introduction of the Rebel Fleet. We can see a Liberty above Home One. The perspective is difficult, but the Headquarters Frigate certainly does look much larger, and I think you can say the same when the fleet is scattering. Also, during the Battle of Endor, there are lots of scenes where you have a flyby of another Mon Calamari cruiser variant, especially the Liberty. If you compare that with the Falcon's flyby of Home One before the 
Battle of Endor, it does seem again like Home 1 is larger. It is, however, a little bit difficult from my perspective to really compare the ship with Nebulon Bs and CR-90s, just because the perspective on so many shots is a little bit wonky. On that note, let's take a look at the Force.net where these discussions have been had for decades now. So these pages are a great repository of resources and I'll link them down below. That being said, keep in mind that of course these are Curtis Saxton pages. He is known for, I would say, exaggerating the figures of Star Wars ships sometimes, or at least making interpretations which are favorable to the power and size of Star Wars ships. So just keep that in mind as we go through this page. So there are various ways that people have used shots in Return of the Jedi to try to guess the proper size of Home 1. I think the best method of doing this is the scene where the shuttle Tidarium leaves the ship's hangar, because we do have a general idea of how large the hangar is in proportion with the rest of the ship based on the actual model, and we can use various things to guesstimate the size of the hangar itself. I think some of the more complex ones are a little questionable. You can try to use, for example, the CR-90 that flies past, or the parked A-Wing. I think though using the shuttle Tidarium is probably your best bet. But again, you can check out those calculations on the force.net, which at the very least show that the ship is larger than 1.3 kilometers and using some of the different methods, perhaps up to almost four. So you guys can dive deep into that rabbit hole if you want to, but where do I come down on this? Personally, for me, when it comes to Star Wars lore, I don't really care so much when it comes to technical specifications, for example, what's in a book, especially when I feel like the number contradicts my sort of internal headcanon. Now, of course, if I was doing a versus episode or something else, then I'd have to take a more nuanced approach. But just generally for me, I consider the home one to be a larger ship than other Mon Calamari cruisers, and I would put it at about the 2.5 kilometer long length. Just that's what it feels like to me. I doubt the official lore would change. I don't really care if it does, and I don't think right now that there's any basis to overturn the numbers which have concretely been put down in several pretty important sources. Star Wars ships having weird sizes isn't anything new, and I think a good example of how sometimes comparing models isn't a good idea comes with the shot of the executor falling down into the Death Star. Personally, I accept that sometimes things are done for cinematic value and that they actually interfere with the logic of the universe or it somehow messes up internal consistency. So in relation to that scene I mentioned, because there's no curve on the Death Star, which there should be, given the size of the Super Star Destroyer, it used to be lore that the Death Star 2 was thus 900 kilometers in diameter. That's almost nine times larger than the Death Star 1. To me, that makes no sense, and I would rather accept the fact that the Death Star 2 just looks flat here because it looks better in the scene or it's easier to film, rather than try to extrapolate the length of the Death Star 2 from the scene and the length of the Executor. Speaking of the Executor, that's a ship which through time has had several different canonical sizes. It's been as short as 8 kilometers long and now is up to 19, so there's been some real variance in there. Also, sometimes there are just straight up lore mistakes. In Star Wars canon, for example, new canon that is, we've had the Hammerhead Corvette, i.e. the ship that took down the Star Destroyer in Rogue One, listed as the length for the old Star Wars Legends Hammerhead Cruiser, which is over twice as long. And that 315 meter length, rather than the canonical about 115 meter length, actually made its way into several different source books and other material, even with fans pointing out that the there was a mistake. So my point is, even in the best of times, Star Wars canon can be very messy, especially when it comes with things like ship lengths. This is made all the more complicated by the fact that not that many people actually care about that sort of stuff, but the people that do, like me, or the people over on the Force.net, care about it a lot. On that note, the conversation we are having today is not a new one, so don't go over to Wikipedia or the Force.net or whatever favorite Star Wars forum you have on and act like you're bringing some new information because I guarantee they've talked about all of this before. I hope this is new for you guys though and I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time guys, this has been your host Eckhart Slatter. As always, be safe and may the Force be with you.